Grace and joy to you, family. It is Dr. Wilson. Welcome back to another window to look through. It's Wednesday night Bible study with ABI, the Angelos Biblical Institute. And today we are going to be looking at a very familiar passage of scripture from the gospel according to John, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Title of our lesson tonight is A Moment with the Master. A Moment with the Master. Let me pray for us as we begin our text on tonight. Our Father and our God, thank you so much for this wonderful privilege that we have as a family to study your word. Thank you for breathing on us and speaking to us and giving us the divine privilege, Lord, again, to enter into your presence. Pray that you would take control of the reins of our minds, our emotions, and allow us tonight, Lord, to look into this text. May it encourage uh, your servants as they walk in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Beloved, the Bible says there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus, and he said, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. You see, humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit, he gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. For the wind blows wherever it wants. And just as you can't hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you do not understand these things? Well, I assure you, we tell you what we know and what we have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses was lifted up, on the bronze snake, or rather as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Amen. Tonight's topic, a moment with the master. Beloved, when we come to our passage tonight, you and I get to see Nicodemus, a leader of the religious crowd, who was on the quest to find God. Nicodemus in this passage was seeking and searching for something to satisfy him in life. You see, he had power, he had influence, but he wasn't satisfied with his position. The Bible says that he came to Jesus at night. He came to Jesus under the cover of darkness. He came in secret. 
He came in silence and he came in seclusion and he came on the quest to get to know God. You see, Nicodemus had saw Jesus do what he did at the Passover feast. And he was so impressed by God that he came by night to see if he could actually get to know the man. And I like this right here because it tells me that nighttime is the time when most people are looking for God. Nighttime is when troubling tears fall on the pillow. Nighttime, that's the time when even the rich get weary, the strong get weak, and the powerful lose strength. Nighttime is when most men and women get vulnerable. That's right, beloved. And nighttime is when the search for Jesus is at his strongest hour. Nicodemus came searching at night. And I like that right there, because here I learned that there may be somebody watching us tonight online. You're just like Nicodemus. Just like Nicodemus, perhaps you've been around religion all your life. Just like Nicodemus, you, you, you know what it's like to be around people who look religious, act religious, walk religious, but you too got questions. And in all your questions, what you're looking for is a word from God. Nicodemus says to Jesus, teacher, we all know that God has sent you to teach us because your miraculous signs are proof that God is with you. Here it is. Nicodemus had watched God move in somebody else's life. And as a result of that, he came to tell him that he believed that he was God and he was sent from God. You see, Nicodemus believed because of what he saw, but he didn't have a relationship with Christ. And here's what I learned. It's not enough to believe what you see. It's not enough to believe in what you've heard. It's not enough to believe in what you believe. You must be born again. Can I get a witness? Secondly, we learn in this passage that Jesus says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Now, why did he say this? Well, Jesus wants Nicodemus to know that in order to get into heaven, he has to die to the old man and be born over the right way. He's got to be born again. The first time he was born, he was born wrong. He has got to come through the new birth. He's got to be born from up above. Beloved, here's what I learned. Because of the master's teaching, Nicodemus is puzzled, confused. <coughs> He's used to religious talk, but not heaven talk. What do you mean? Well, Nicodemus wants to think logically about the new birth. He wants to identify it in human terms, but human terms and divine terms are not the same terms. You see, Jesus is speaking about spiritual matters and a supernatural invention. He's telling Nicodemus about what heaven says, and Nicodemus does not comprehend. Here's what I learned, beloved. Every now and then, God speaks to all of us. And just like Nicodemus, we don't comprehend. We, we try to make things make human sense or uh, connect in human terms. But human terms and heaven terms are two different terms. Here, let me say it this way. God demands, yes, that we see the mystery of his word. He demands that we trust the mystery of his word, that we submit to the mystery of his word. Jesus says in verse five, the truth is, Nicodemus, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and born of the spirit. Humans can reproduce human life, but the Holy Spirit 
is the only one who can give new life. So don't be surprised at my statement, Nicodemus, that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so Nicodemus, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Now, beloved, here in this verse, when we hear Jesus say that, we hear Jesus revealing supernatural assistance given to the one who desires to be born again. Oh yeah, it comes through the new birth, except you hear the word and except the spirit of God comes upon you, comes inside of you, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Here's what I learned in this passage. It's not about being religious. It's not about being smart like Nicodemus. It's not about being rich like Nicodemus. It's not about having position, power, or influence like Nicodemus. No, the Holy Spirit must come into your life and save you, causing you to become a new person in order to enter into the kingdom of God. See, to experience the new birth, the old you must die. The old you must give way to the new you. And you have to become a new person in order to see heaven. Oh, beloved, when I look at this text, I'm grateful today because this conversation with Nicodemus is critical, critical for Nicodemus in order to get to know who God really is. Well, thirdly, we discover in this passage that Jesus, yes, he recognizes Nicodemus's unbelief. See, as a teacher of the Old Testament, Nicodemus should have saw the fulfillment of Scripture in the coming Messiah. He read that he would have studied the law and the Torah and the prophets. But here Jesus has to clarify for him who he is. So Jesus says, Nicodemus, I assure you that I'm telling you what we know and what we have seen and yet you won't believe us. What's happening here? Jesus is speaking for and on behalf of the triune God. See, in his observation, he informs Nicodemus that earth is not his home, heaven is. And if he does not believe the things that Jesus is talking about and is doing in the earth, how will he understand and believe the things he's doing in heaven. Jesus, in closing his conversation, then reveals one last time what his purpose for coming to earth is and what his plan fully entails in redeeming lost men. Jesus says, Nicodemus, I've come down from heaven and I'm gonna return back again. And then he uses a story from the Old Testament to teach Nicodemus about the truth he's talking about. He says, just like Moses in the wilderness, Nicodemus had to offer up a sacrifice to save man, I've come to be the final sacrifice for all men. Here it is. He quotes from the book of Numbers. He says in book of Numbers, in the book of Numbers, and they begin to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they complain. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink, and we hate this horrible manner. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We've sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Family. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of the poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. And all who are bitten will live if they simply look up and look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look and the bronze snake, look at the bronze snake and be healed. You catch it? 
Jesus brings this Old Testament story back to Nicodemus' mind, to his learning, to show him his need for a savior and to reveal to Nicodemus who he truly is. You see, so everyone that believes in Christ will be saved and have eternal life. Nicodemus didn't get it, but he was looking in the eyes of a savior. Guess what, family? Nicodemus didn't get it, but he had this moment with the master. Nicodemus didn't get it, but one day he would get it. Nicodemus didn't see, but one day it would come into view. See, when I look at this passage, there are many people who look just like Nicodemus, beloved. They don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't swear, they don't cheat, they pay their taxes, they vote in citizens, but they don't know Jesus. They don't have a personal, intimate relationship with him. They have not been born from up above. In fact, you could say they do good things, they help poor people, they give lots of money for good causes, but they've not been born from above. And as a result, they're just like Nicodemus, in need of a savior before it's too late. Oh, beloved, when Nicodemus came to Jesus on that night, he came seeking and searching. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he wasn't satisfied with being a religious person or being in a religious position. When he came to Jesus, he came on a secret quest from God. And I noticed that Jesus met him in this secret meeting. Oh, yes, he did. And Jesus will meet you too in that secret meeting when you have a desire to meet with him. I've had some secret meetings with the Lord. Can I get a witness right there? There have been some times in my life when it's just been me and God meeting secretly for some business. There are some times when I don't need to have nobody else hearing my conversation but me and the Lord. There are some times when my heart is so heavy and my mind so messed up that you couldn't handle it if you knew what I had to pray about. So you see, I'm extremely glad today that God chose to meet with Nicodemus. And if he met with Nicodemus, then surely he'll meet with you. If he could tolerate that sinner, then one more sinner ain't going to bother him. Can I get a witness? So Nicodemus, Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now here we see that Jesus opens up for Nicodemus, God's divine pardon for Nicodemus. Catch it? The pardon consists of one thing, believing in the Christ. What Jesus wants Nicodemus to know is that God loved the world so much, he gave them a savior, a savior to trust in for salvation in spite of their rebellion and sin against a holy God. Jesus wants Nicodemus to know he has got to do more than have a head knowledge about his Savior. But he must entrust his whole life to him. See, to believe and entrust your life to Christ is to escape from perishing. To believe and entrust your life to Christ is to avoid eternal punishment. To believe and entrust your life to Christ is to be saved from the damnation that's to come. Oh, beloved, if Nicodemus will entrust himself to Christ, he will have eternal life. Nicodemus can be saved if he only believes in Christ as the Savior of mankind. Did you hear me, family? The Bible says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And here's what I learned. In the master's moment with Nicodemus, he reveals the purpose for sending Christ into the world. And what was that, you ask? Well, God did not send Jesus into the world to destroy it. God did not send Jesus into the world to wipe it out. God did not send Jesus into the world to judge anyone. 
He did not send Jesus into the world to condemn Nicodemus. Jesus came to redeem it. And this time he came to rescue mankind. This time he came to show divine benevolence. He came to give mercy and show grace that through him, everyone that believes might be saved. Now, there is coming a time when Jesus is coming to earth for more than redeeming and salvation. Jesus is coming to earth to cast judgment the final time. But this time in this passage, he was coming to be a sacrifice. And I'm so glad that he came. I said, I'm so glad that he came and offered himself as the sacrificial offering for your sins and my sins. Out on the old rugged cross, Jesus died for the sins of the world. He paid the price, beloved, that you and I might be saved. Nicodemus was hearing the gospel, and this was his moment with the master. And I'm so glad he had his moment, because if Nicodemus had his moment, then guess what that means, beloved? You too will have a moment with the Lord. You too will have a moment when you get to make your decision for Christ. Well, I want to thank you tonight for watching this window to look through. I want to thank you tonight for dialing in on the ABI page tonight and studying John chapter 3, this familiar passage with us. If I were you, I would make a decision for Christ. And I would tell everyone I knew who did not have a relationship with Christ how important this very act is. Well, I love you and I love being your teacher. Let me pray for you tonight. Our Father and our God, thank you so very much for this precious and divine moment to be called your children. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, keeping us, watching over us, and most of all, providing a savior for us. Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to come down to earth and become our sacrifice. Father God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit who makes it possible for us to experience the new birth. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, for your eternal work in making us one with you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, beloved, love you. See you next week at the same time. Peace.